Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We want to welcome everyone to the ETAP 12 New Features webinar. The screen in front of you is displaying the login information for this webinar. If you have any issues visually or audio based, call in the number in front of you, the webinar login number for, for any issues to resolve is 949 462 0100 and let them know that you have webinar login problems or you can go directly to our website for frequently asked questions number 24 support on frequently asked question common webinar questions at this time I'd like to introduce our presenter for the day his name is Mr. Tanush Candlewall he's our vice president of engineering services and he will be conducting the ETAP 12 presentation thank you Tanush Thanks, John. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome again to the ETAP 12 New Features webinar. Uh, ETAP 12 is uh, a new release uh, in, in a long line of uh, ETAP releases. It is the latest upgrade of the market-leading electrical power system design and operation software. The new analysis features and enhanced capabilities in ETAP 12 uh, effectively enable optimized design, quality, safety, and productivity. As you can see in front of you, there are a number of new features and capabilities uh, that are going to be covered during this uh, presentation. However, uh, we won't be able to sp spend enough time on each and every item, but we will be going through a series of webinars uh, fairly soon to cover some of these topics in further detail. This webinar will purely highlight some of the key features and capabilities uh, in ETAP 12 that you're seeing uh, in front of you. ETAP 12 is basically a multiple language release. Besides English, we, we are also releasing ETAP 12 in Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, and Russian. In addition to that, the full color crystal reports that we provide with ETAP are also available in Portuguese and German languages. Starting off with the enhancements that we've done to the single line diagram and the, the database, the very first feature that uh, most of you will uh, appreciate quite a bit when you're building single line diagrams are, uh, is a feature called Auto Connection. Auto Connect uh, allows you to quickly and efficiently build single line diagrams. The way the feature uh, works in the program is fairly simple. If I was to go ahead and drop a transformer onto my single line diagram, in, in ETAP, you normally make the connections by clicking and joining uh, these connectors together. However, in auto connect mode, the behavior is radically different and much more easy to use. So when I hit the auto connect mode, I can drop the same transformer onto my single line diagram and the program gives me a connector automatically without holding uh, the left click or dragging the connector through uh, various unnecessary bends. I can then click on the primary side and make the connection and the program automatically gives me the secondary connection that I can continue making further and then followed by the tertiary winding. If I decide I don't want to continue making this connection I can simply click away. So it makes the connections a whole lot uh, simpler uh, to use and understand, especially for a new user uh, who has just started using ETAP, you can turn on the auto connect mode, drop in the equipment, the program automatically gives you the connectors that you need to connect the equipment, and you can continue building the one line fairly quickly. The auto connect feature also allows you to auto disconnect, which is also a very nice uh, capability that has been added to ETAP 12. For example, I have this motor on sub 2B uh, bus, uh, motor 2, which is 2500 horsepower. I can simply move this motor from sub 2B bus to sub 2A uh, location. The way I can do that, again, in auto connect mode being enabled, I can simply double click on the connector. Uh, the program automatically breaks the connection for me, and I can just re simply reconnect onto a different location and move my equipment around. And obviously, if you decide you don't want to make this change, you can simply press undo, 
and, and the program will uh, move the equipment back graphically where you started from, uh, break the connection, and reconnect back into Sub2B bus. So with AutoConnect and Undo features, it makes it very simple to navigate, create, edit an existing single line diagram. The next feature that we've added to the single line diagram is Interlock Enforcer. Interlock Enforcer is uh, a means of pro uh, including logic uh, into the system topology such that uh, behavioral changes like precondition logic, post-action logic, actions can be included along with the single line diagram. Uh, an example of this would be uh, shown here on the main bus. Uh, we have breaker 1, 2, and 10 connected along with a ground switch. We all know that the system is energized because I have the continuity check on uh, and it's showing the system in a dark black color. It's energized. So the minute I try to de-energize the system uh, or essentially close this ground switch, I am grounding the system effectively but this is an incorrect action. I, sh I cannot ground uh, an energized system like this. It's a safety hazard. However, if the interlock enforcer uh, option is enabled, so I'm going to go ahead and click this. The, enforcing, uh, the interlock enforcing has been enabled. I can now go ahead and close the ground switch. And as soon as I try to do that, the program essentially gives me a list of conflicts. The ground switch is being grounded in the system, however, breaker 1, 2, and 10 are still closed. Hence, I'm unable to carry out this action. If I click OK, the ground switch will remain open. So the program enforces these logics that you can define uh, in, in the system, and the logics can be defined in any switching device like breakers, ground switches, uh, single pole, single throw, double throw switches, and so on by simply specifying a pre-switching logic that is a pre-condition check logic and a post-action logic that means some kind of trigger once the pre-switching logic passes uh, in the system. So the only way right now I can ground this system based on the logic that I've defined is if I close breaker 2, breaker 10, breaker 1 and then close this ground switch in and the minute I ground the system the program also color codes the grounded portion for me and tells me this bus is in orange, it's grounded effectively from the rest of the system. Uh, similarly, if I was, try, if I was to close uh, breaker 2 into the system um, and I try to run a power flow analysis uh, and I'm going to close breaker 10 as well and do the same. So I'm actually energizing a grounded portion of the system. All the calculations in the program will effectively point out that there is an error or a safety issue inside the electrical system the way it has been configured. So similarly, the, the, the logic for uh, interlocks can be fairly complicated. Uh, you can include pre-switching logic you can also include Boolean logic, such as AND, OR, IF, THEN, ELSE statements, and you can also include uh, TRIP statements. Uh, for example, if I was to again enforce this logic, and if I go ahead and open this generator, I have interlocked the generator breaker with the breaker on this motor 2, 2500 horsepower. So as soon as I try to open this breaker, uh, motor 2 breaker is trying to trip as well. The program is asking you, do you really want to go ahead and do this? If you continue with, with this action, automatically motor 2 breaker will open and the system will show the de-energized uh, sections accordingly. So simple interlocks like these can also be enforced and making, making life very easy so that you don't have to remember uh, which breakers open which other breakers in the system uh, for a secondary selective system, is it uh, main tie close, main tie main open? What kind of logics do I have in the system? They can all be configured uh, inside the program. 
The interlock enforcer is also utilized by another application in ETAP called switching sequence management. Uh, just to give you a quick flavor for sw switching sequence management, it's a module that's available on the uh, analysis toolbar. When you log in or enter switching sequence management, uh, the program allows you to create a switching plan. So I can go ahead and create a new switching plan, and in this plan, I'm going to include breaker one as uh, a breaker that's being opened. So graphically, I can include the actions inside the switching uh, sequence builder. I can open breaker two. And let's say for sake of uh, demonstration, I'm going to close this uh, ground switch and then open breaker 10. And that's the switching logic or the sequence that I'm following in the system. So if I go ahead and run the switching uh, management program, the program essentially runs a power flow calculation and notifies the engineer or the operator in the system which actions are valid, which ones are a safety violation, uh, which ones are, are violating the electrical system rules, and so on and so forth. So I can continue implementing my action, and you'll notice that the ground switch close action is skipped because I'm grounding on an energized system. This action has been flagged as invalid because the interlock logic did not pass. So I clearly have a incorrect sequence which I can uh, correct and continue on with uh, my switching plan. The next feature that we've added in the program which is very powerful and extremely useful is the cable manager. As we all know in any electrical system there are hundreds and thousands of cables in the system and sometimes managing the input data, the calculations for sizing and the summary, the cable schedules can be very uh, cumbersome, very time consuming to put together. The cable manager essentially allows us to create many different types of reports and filter and sort through all the different cables in the system to find the information that you need uh, and present it uh, in, in a very clear uh, deliverable that, that you can um, include with your reports uh, or uh, include as part of the system study. The way the cable manager can be launched is by clicking on the cable manager button uh, on, on the project menu. Once the cable manager uh, window pops up, you're going to notice uh, a section on the left side that allows you to filter or manage the cables that you're viewing on the window on the right side. Uh, this table is broken up into many different pieces like information, physical, the impedance data, the physical configuration of the system, and so on and so forth. So if I was to look at the list of cables here, I'm looking at all three-phase AC cables at various voltage ranges that are branch and equipment cables. I can also choose to include cables that are in my underground uh, duct bank, so th the list essentially increases. I can also include de-energized cables that may be used for future or they are uh, temporarily dis disconnected or de-energized uh, pieces of equipment. So not only can you view the information of all the cables in one place, you can also access uh, the, the cables directly from the cable manager and make individual changes to these uh, cables. But the the nice thing about the cable manager is the, the pages that are marked impasti, sizing, electrical shock, and, and thermal sizing. The, these are the pages where the program actually gives you a summarized calculation uh, rather than going through every individual cable. So it really saves a lot of time to view the information uh, and also to do batch cable sizing. So a as an example, I'm going to go to the sizing page for phase conductor and uh, cable 20. Uh, let's say I want to size this cable for uh, loading. And I've already run load flow in my system. There's about 60 amps of design current flowing through this conductor. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And the program now uses 60 amps as my criteria for sizing the phase conductor. The existing size is about 350 kcmil, but the program is telling me based on the current and the existing load, the new size would be about size 4. So 
the optimal size that you see on the right hand side are the sizing results for each of these conductors and they're all shown in one location uh, making it a very concise and uh, efficient way of representing the data. From here I can also uh, select uh, a summary page and the summary page gives me all the information about the cable including the protected devices, the impasti, the sizing information, uh, ground conductor sizing and so on and so forth. So all the information that we store in the ETAP database related to the cables is then uh, quickly summarized and shown. You can select all these cables, click export very quickly and the program will then take all this information and include it in a very nicely laid out Excel format uh, which you can again include as part of your deliverables uh, or hide and show whichever columns uh, you need. Uh, filtering has been provided as a standard feature so you can quickly sort and filter and find the cables you need. If you're interested in finding just your uh, low voltage cables, 1 kV or, and, and below, you can just filter based on voltage uh, and only view uh, the low voltage cables in the system. So again, it's very powerful and very flexible, but the really neat part about the cable manager is also the fact that you can select a group of cables and re-get the data from the library. So just in case you have changed information in your library, you can change uh, or re-get all the fresh data from the library and update these cables. Uh, the other thing you can do with the cable manager is, uh, and it's something that we generally do when we are going from uh, preliminary design to detail engineering, if you selected cables that are um, a certain source, let's say National Electric Code, uh, because you didn't know who the manufacturer of the conductor was, in detail engineering, let's say that information is now available, you can just click on the cables that you want to change, go to library, select the new vendor, and apply uh, the changes uh, into the system and change the data source for all conductors or a group of conductors in one shot. So again, as a summary, the cable manager is a, a very fast and efficient way of managing a batch of cables uh, and generating customizable reports and running the cable sizing uh, calculations. In addition to the cable manager, for sizing purposes, we also have BS7671, IEC 60364 sizing calculations included as part of ETAP. Uh, and these are typically used on the IEC side uh, or the uh, international side of, of things. But here in US, we also use National Electric Code, IEEE 399 Brown Book, ICEA methods, and, and so on. The next uh, enhancement to ETAP 12 was done for photovoltaic arrays. Uh, photovoltaics were added in ETAP version 11 uh, as part of a system where you could model uh, interconnected uh, solar farms. You could drop a component into ETAP 11 um, that represented a complete solar farm with its inverters and use this for interconnection studies uh, for transmission purposes. What we've done in ETAP 12 is gone to the next step which is include uh, discrete uh, DC pho photovoltaic arrays. So I'm going to go to my DC system here real quick. Uh, I have a, a DC PV array. I'm going to open this up. And I can see a group of photovoltaic arrays in my system that can be modeled as discrete DC panels uh, along with their individual string cables, combiner boxes, and so on. So I'm going to use a revision uh, called 2015 Renewables. Uh, maybe I'm adding these solar panels in the year 2015. So these are energized now in my system um, and I can then go ahead and run my DC load flow uh, or DC short circuit calculations. Uh, currently my panels are connected without any load so they are just uh, connected to a cable and as soon as I energize the load in the system I'm going to use my configuration here to include the inverter along with these panels so you can see there's about 40 four kilowatts or so flowing through the system and obviously as the loading changes the output from the panel will also change 
uh, along with the voltages. The definition for the panel is uh, remains the same as version 11. You can open up the panel editor, uh, go to the library, and we have uh, an extensive library of photovoltaic panels that you can pick from uh, and include them in your calculation. So the program includes the PV curve, the IV curves, so that we can make more efficient and uh, detailed calculations with uh, the photovoltaic arrays. Uh, the next element uh, that was actually enhanced in uh, ETAP 12 is the transformer. Uh, we added a concept of buried delta transformer into our two winding and three winding transformers. The buried delta uh, winding is, is a winding that is included with the transformers, but it does not have any load connected to it. So the winding has not been drawn out for external load connection, but it is used to essentially manage the zero sequence contribution uh, from faults in various parts of the electrical system. Uh, using the buried delta winding, you can now model uh, essentially or effectively four winding transformers by including the buried delta winding into the three winding uh, transformer as well. Uh, along with the modeling of the buried delta, we've also included uh, various construction types that do make an impact on the zero sequence contributions from the transformers. Uh, these different construction types are basically the core and shell type and for the core type we can model three limb, four limb and five limb constructions. So in, in the program uh, if you were to include these capabilities uh, you can go to any transformer uh, and go to the impedance page, select Berry Delta winding uh, for this transformer. You can also specify the zero sequence impedance based on actual test data uh, or you can just simply ask the program to include some typical uh, information for you. As soon as you click OK the, the symbol also changes and it actually represents uh, a Berry Delta transformer uh, and you can do the same thing with a three winding transformer where you include the Berry Delta winding to model a four winding transformer and specify the zero sequence data for uh, uh, based on your test results for, for this uh, transformer. Coming back real quick to my two winding transformer, uh, I can also change between shell and core type. Uh, so this option is provided on the uh, information page. Uh, as part of uh, ETAP, we've also expanded our uh, capability to import uh, third-party databases. Uh, this is obviously important because ETAP is the uh, de facto power system analysis software. There, there are a, a lot of uh, existing users of ETAP. We are, we are used in over 50,000 companies, uh, about 100,000 licenses or so, and it obviously makes sense to provide standard data conversion tools in order to make it easy for people to migrate over from uh, other softwares over to ETAP. So these uh, data conversion tools have been provided as a standard feature uh, as part of the, the base module. They include conversions from uh, EasyPower version 8 and version 9. They also include uh, conversions from SKM version 6 and 6.5 uh, projects. So these conversions include not only the single line diagram uh, but they also include uh, protective uh, device settings and TCCs uh, as, as applicable. So in order to do a conversion it's fairly straightforward. Um, I can just create a, a quick project, uh, go to file, data exchange, I'm gonna pull up uh, a, a project that we can uh, convert fairly quickly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and browse to the project file.
So this is the actual uh, project that I want to convert uh, over to ETAP. Uh, I also want to convert the capture TCCs into star as well. And in order for me to do that, I have to map the library. And this is actually a fairly extensive mapping system that walks through the protected devices that are in your third-party database, mapping the manufacturer model and the settings, correcting them wherever necessary, uh, wherever the settings may have been incorrect in your third-party databases, because ETAP always keeps track of settings in, in your project file that are valid. So we do not allow the um, uh, engineer to select a setting that does not actually exist in the device. So as we are doing our um, mapping, we are trying to make all these corrections. Wherever we find a complete match, uh, we show a completed sign. The mapping is complete. Whereas for this particular device, the mapping is, is partial. Uh, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to select uh, a mapping option here. So this is actually a K-rated fuse. Uh, it is actually size uh, 6K. Um, and I'm going to go ahead with this option. So similarly, we, we have mapping for fuses, LVCBs, uh, and relays. So uh, the program really takes care of all the, the effort, uh, making it a whole lot easier for you to map information that uh, could not be found uh, or was partially found. And once this mapping is complete, uh, we can just click OK. And the program will go ahead and map uh, the project into ETAP and uh, auto-generate uh, the one-line diagram. This one-line diagram includes the exact same layout as the original file and I'm able to then quickly go ahead and run uh, either a power flow calculation or go to short circuit, fault a bus, run my fault study. I can even go to coordination, uh, apply a sequence of operation fault in my system and the program tells me for a fault at this location, my fuse will trip in the system. Uh, I can also pull up my time current curves. So I've, I've actually imported all the time current curves from this third party database over to ETAP. So it eliminates hundreds of man hours to do this conversion either manually or start building the system from scratch. So just as a summary, uh, these conversion programs are available as part of uh, ETAP base package uh, and you can easily access them from the data exchange menu uh, for EasyPower SKM and raw data format version 29, 30 and 32. Continuing on with all the features that we've added in ETAP 12, uh, that we've completed these capabilities for single line diagram uh, and uh, databases. So we're moving on to the analysis modules. A lot of exciting things have been added uh, into the existing uh, modules like uh, load flow, harmonics, um, and, and so on and so forth. The first item we're going to cover is load flow. In load flow, we've added a new method, which is adaptive newton raphson uh, in order to show this to you quickly, uh, I'm going to sk skip over to uh, my electrical system here. I'm going to use a revision to energize this system. And it essentially represents a generation, transmission, and distribution system uh, as an equivalent. We have a 400 kilometer line. It's a fairly long line. Uh, and if I was to go ahead and run uh, a load flow calculation on the system, you can see that uh, the voltages are 100%, 122, uh, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and um, change the loading slightly so we can see some more load in the system. So here we can see that my buses are somewhat under voltage in a couple of locations in the system. So I have this uh, line modeled in, in ETAP without any series compensation. Uh, this is a line by itself that has line charging or susceptance. However, if I wanted to apply compensation on this line, which means I'm trying to model a series uh, capacitor uh, on the line, and I run my calculations, uh, 
the, the program may or may not uh, give you the correct solution, uh, not because the, uh, the calculation is incorrect, but because the parameters are so far away from each other, uh, the calculated voltages uh, may not be uh, the, the, the correct amount. Um, the initial conditions essentially are so diverse from each other that the solution is not found, so the program either does not converge or simply diverges. So in, in order to overcome uh, issues with uh, convergence, wherever initial condition becomes uh, a problem, you can use Newton-Raphson method, the adaptive Newton-Raphson method. It's been added to the load flow study case. And you can then go ahead and run the calculations and, and see the solution. So this adaptive Newton-Raphson method will provide a solution uh, for most uh, systems wherever the input data is correct, but the initial conditions may be such that any load flow program may have a problem running or converging. So this adaptive Newton-Raphson method has been included in other modules such as motor starting, uh, in harmonics, uh, and transient stability, and so on and it's available as a standard uh, load flow method for either power flow solutions or initial conditions. The next capability that we've added in ETAP is open phase fault. So the open phase fault or open phase condition is uh, a condition that does occur in the electrical system but it's seldom analyzed. However, we've added the capability in the program and made it easy and friendly enough for you to quickly figure out what would happen if one of the phases in your system were to accidentally open up. So an open phase fault is also known as a series uh, fault uh, in the electrical system. I'm going to temporarily take out the buried delta winding from this transformer uh, so we can see some clear results. And in order to run open phase uh, condition I can simply insert the, the fault uh, or an open phase condition on phase A, B, or C in my electrical system. I'm going to go ahead and select phase C and open up the phase on transformer T2. So very quickly I get my results back and the program is showing me phase A, B, and C voltages and currents uh, throughout the system. If I go to my display options I can also see my sequence values. Uh, or any other information that I choose to see here. Um, temporarily I'm going to remove the fault and I'm going to show you the effect of the open phase. Typically in an electrical system uh, you will have uh, negative and zero sequence values. Most of the current is flowing on the positive sequence but as soon as you apply an open phase condition uh, in the system the uh, uh, negative or zero sequence current may change drastically. So in, in this uh, example you can see that the negative sequence current ch changed very drastically from 0 0.04 uh, all the way to 72 amps. And this is the effect of an open phase condition. Uh, the increase of negative and zero sequence current depending upon the configuration of the system that may cause misoperation or misactuation of protective devices throughout the electrical system. So most of the time we do coordination for phase current, but ETAP now provides you the capability to understand the uh, currents flowing through the system in the negative and zero sequence uh, values as well for an open phase fault. Okay. Um, the next set of uh, enhancements uh, were done for arc flash calculations and one of the most exciting ones is the sequence of operation. Sequence of operation was introduced in ETAP a couple of versions ago and it has proven to be a very effective and time-saving tool for doing protective device coordination. Uh, in the existing program you can simply drop a fault uh, onto any location in the system. It does not have to be a node or a bus and the program quickly tells you through a graphical sequence uh, giving you a number one, two, and three in this case, what is the sequence of operation of these protected devices based on a fault applied at this location? Uh, 
you can obviously choose to see many further levels away you can also change the fault type from three phase to single phase so this nice capability that quickly lets you see graphically where you may have potential miscoordination in the system has been added to ArcFlash as well when you go into uh, ArcFlash mode you can quickly insert the fault just like you would in the ETAP star module and I'm gonna apply it to the same location and the program finds the protected devices that will clear the fault it determines the clearing time based on the arcing current and then graphically tells me which devices must operate in order for me to isolate uh, this fault completely uh, from the electrical system so breaker 4 and 10 must operate because these are the two sources uh, in the system that are feeding the fault on sub 2b and just like uh, ETAP star you can easily move the fault over to a completely different location and get your results for clearing times, arcing currents, flash protection boundaries, uh, bottom line generate the labels and the work permits straight out of uh, the program. All of this information is summarized in a very nice report analyzer that includes all the reports that were generated for various conditions like uh, minimum uh, faults, maximum fault contributions, uh, various uh, breaker configurations for the electrical system and the analyzer makes your life even more easier by just simply giving you the worst case condition so this one checkbox and asking the program to give me the worst case condition for any bus in the system saves you tremendous amount of time analyzing all the cases that you've run so very quickly the program tells me that uh, for a fault on bus one uh, my my output report that has this particular name is my worst case condition and the worst case energy level will be level C in this case and obviously A, B and C's are corresponding to NFPA 2012 which is also part of um, ETAP 12 release if you uh, choose to select a particular bus from from the analyzer and you want to see this information graphically we've provided that option as well you can simply select either a three phase or single phase bus uh, and click on the one line diagram option as soon as you do that uh, the program automatically drops a fault at uh, in, in, in this case it's a single phase bus and it tells tells me which is the protected device that will clear the fault uh, in the electrical system so similarly you can quickly move on to any other location you want let's say MCC1 click on the one line diagram and the program will apply the fault at that location and tell you which is the uh, arcing fault clearing device uh, in the system and from here you can also generate a, a sequence of operation viewer that you can export into Excel so for MCC1 uh, breaker 3 would be the one that operates it's actuated by relay 4 uh, you can also select a group of them and see the sequence individually uh, as you navigate through each device uh, and export this information obviously into uh, Excel so very uh, flexible and powerful capabilities provided in the analyzer again to make the reporting and deliverables a whole lot easier and smoother uh, uh, to, to carry out Uh, ArcFlash also includes an additional capability which is device duty calculation. We've added this feature in the program uh, as again a safety precaution. Uh, when you go to the short circuit study case you can quickly uh, select uh, an option to uh, run uh, device duty calculation uh, before an ArcFlash calculation is run. Uh, the reason for doing that is in the event that you have a breaker that has already over duty in the event of a bolted fault uh, th that is a, a problem that needs to be corrected first before you even get to an arc flash calculation and try to coordinate or uh, adjust your settings so when you have this option selected and you run uh, the arc flash calculation the program not only gives you the alerts for uh, arc flash but it also gives you the device duty alerts uh, related to uh, 
the bracing or interrupting capability of devices. So again, as a summary, if breaker 15 already has a interrupting issue, uh, it is over duty on bolted fault, that condition is a primary con uh, condition that needs to be looked into and uh, uh, understood before you even get to an arc flash study. In arc flash we've also provided uh, two additional options uh, user defined instant energy correction factors uh, these factors are used uh, by the IEEE 1584 equations and it allows additional flexibility in interpreting those results uh, or the uh, tests that were done by 1584 and you can make some uh, adjustments or scaling to uh, the 1584 equations based on this correction factor. Uh, we've also added another option which is main protected device isolation. When this option is selected uh, the understanding is that the main protected device that will isolate the fault on the switch gear is physically isolated from the faulting uh, cubicle. That means there is a barrier or a metal sheet or something in between that will prevent the main protected device from being damaged. Uh, if that is the case, the program will pick the upstream device, the immediate upstream device to clear the fault. If the main protected device is not isolated from the rest of the gear through a physical barrier, then the result is conservative, which implies that the program assumes the main protected device may be damaged as the fault occurs on the switch gear, in which case it will jump to the next protected device in the system. Moving on to uh, harmonics, uh, as I mentioned before, we've added adaptive newton raphson load flow. Uh, to the harmonic uh, study case for uh, enhanced load flow calculations. But the most significant addition to harmonics is the interharmonic modeling and simulation. The interharmonic modeling and simulation has been added per IEC 61000, which is a standard for electromagnetic compatibility. Uh, and it essentially defines interharmonics as simply a frequency which is a non-integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. In other words, um, we essentially deal with harmonics most of the time that are integers of the fundamental frequency, third order, fifth order, seventh order, and so on, which are multiples of 50 or 60 hertz depending upon where you are uh, living uh, in the world. Uh, we also have DC components typically uh, as part of the harmonic distortion, but interharmonics are non-integers such as 1.34, 0.56, uh, 7.4. So these are non-integer harmonics of the fundamental frequency, and they also include subharmonics, which means uh, orders that are uh, greater than 0 hertz but less than your fundamental frequency, such as 0.56 or 0.71 and so on. So ETAP 12 was enhanced to include the interharmonics as well as the subharmonics in the system besides the traditional harmonics that we handle uh, in, in the program. The way you would uh, include the uh, harmonics inside the, the calculation is simply by selecting the interharmonic uh, spectrum from the library. In this particular case, I have a uh, nonlinear device. I have included a cycloconverter model uh, for this particular uh, device in the system. And I'm looking at the waveform and the spectrum for this device. The way I would define this in the harmonic library is by simply going to uh, the manufacturer model. Uh, I can click on uh, add and start adding my information in. I'm going to quickly edit the existing data that I already have. Uh, so the library has been enhanced to show you the harmonic information as well as include the interharmonic uh, data uh, for the cycloconverter. So you can see the subharmonic order 0.567 and all the non-integers thereafter that are greater than the fundamental frequency. In order to add uh, 
a harmonic uh, source into the library, you can again simply click on add, click on test, you can include uh, interharmonics. Click on edit and then uh, you can simply tell the program my fundament, fundamental frequency is 60. Uh, I'm trying to model a six pulse uh, nonlinear device. Uh, I want to go up to uh, order uh, 5. Uh, or M order 5, which means I'm going up to 6 times 5 minus 1, uh, MP minus 1, so about 29th order. And if I plug in my fundamental and I populate my harmonics, uh, I will essentially get all my harmonics uh, in, in the system. You can simply put uh, another calculation here, which is based on the rectifier firing angle and the commutation reactance. Uh, and let the program create the spectrum for you. So very quickly by just specifying the pulse number, how many maximum orders do I want to go down to, uh, and basic information about the converters such as the alpha and the commutation reactants, I can quickly generate a spectrum and a waveform that I can include with my harmonic study. And I can do the same with the interharmonics uh, tab as well. So what happens when you include interharmonics in the system? I'm going to go ahead and run a harmonic study. Uh, using the adaptive newton raphson method. Uh, I'm going to pull up the plot for uh, bus 2, waveform and spectrum. So here I have the spectrum for uh, bus 2 along with its corresponding waveform. I'm going to go ahead and uh, essentially uh, move on to energizing this charger uh, and this charger as I mentioned earlier has a cycloconverter model that includes interharmonics. So I'm going to go ahead and run this simulation again and look at the plot for bus 2 waveform and spectrum again and compare them side by side. So as you can see from uh, an analysis that did not include the interharmonics we can see discrete integer harmonics in the system, whereas when the uh, cycloconverter model was included, you can see the sidebands or the interharmonics uh, distributed throughout this spectrum. Uh, and obviously the waveform is a little bit more polluted or dirtier than before, uh, and you can visibly see a little bit of additional notching or uh, deviations uh, in, in the AC sine wave. So very quickly you can include the effect of interharmonics in the system such as cycloconverter models and, and so on uh, in, in ETAP 12. Uh, ETAP also includes a very comprehensive low voltage system and what we've actually added on the low voltage side uh, is armor and sheath sizing. Currently in the program version 11 and beyond, we were handling the auxiliary cable and the main cable, the protective earthing conductor sizing uh, as, as part of our low voltage system. Uh, we've expanded that to essentially include the uh, sizing for armor and sheath. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to quickly find a low voltage cable here. Uh, and in my configuration page, I want to include the armor and sheath for this conductor. I can quickly go to my physical page and tell the program, yes, there is a steel armor and a sheath included uh, with this cable. Specify a uh, physical data for the armor diameter and the sheath thickness. From my configuration page, I can now select my armor and sheath uh, and uh, the approximate size is displayed uh, for my information. I can include the armor impedance and the sheath impedance based on typical data uh, and then move on to uh, the sizing page and uh, based on the type of material I've selected the program gives me the initial and the final uh, temperature for for a fault uh, or, or the thermal heating of these two uh, physical pieces of layers on the cable and then on the results page the program essentially gives me the armor and sheath size 
uh, as k square s square size so it tells me this is my existing size and my new size is obviously a whole lot bigger than what I had previously selected so the armor and sheath sizing were two of the major enhancements into the low voltage system besides the handling of the existing British standards and the IEC standards for cable sizing. Um, we've also enhanced our license manager so we've added the capability now for license borrowing. License borrowing basically implies that I can uh, decide to quickly check out a license uh, for a specified duration of time and this license is checked out without actually having a physical key uh, on my computer or on my laptop. So if you are a, a person who typically goes to uh, a site from, from your office or your consultant traveling uh, to various other customers on a regular basis and your licenses are stored in your corporate or main office, this is a perfect uh, option uh, for, for you to check out the license for a specific duration of time uh, and take the ETAB license with you uh, and continue your work on site or off site wherever you are and essentially based on the time frame that has been specified during the time of checkout uh, the license automatically then returns back to the uh, main server where the ETAP licenses are stored and you don't have to really worry about uh, checking the license back in. The license durations are configurable. They, are, they can range from, 100, from 1 to 120 days. So if you're going out for about a month uh, for, a, for a site visit, you can check out the license for 30 days. And upon expiration of 30 days, the license will automatically expire on your laptop and return back to your corporate server. So if you have any questions about license borrowing, please feel free to call us or contact sales at etab.com and they'll be able to explain you exactly how this feature uh, will help you in your organization. So we're pretty much coming to the end of our uh, webinar and uh, just want to cover some of the capabilities that we've added to our real-time system. Uh, ETAP real-time is essentially uh, a means for, for you to take your design model and convert it into an operations model. Um, so ETAB is a platform where you can quickly transition from your design data and connect that design model or your single line diagram with real-time electrical information that is continuously pulled and updated uh, within the program. And there are a many, uh, there are many intelligent applications in ETAB that we've already included with real time, such as intelligent load shedding, uh, automatic generation control, economic dispatch, uh, trending, alarming. So ETAB essentially gives you the HMI as well as the uh, analysis platform uh, that you need on a, on a real time basis. So in in addition to the current interface that we have for ETAP uh, as an engineering workstation, we've also added monitoring and control templates that make it easy for the operator or the manager in the system to quickly visualize the information that he's interested in, the KPIs and the dashboards that he wants to see, uh, and not be uh, confused or cluttered with all the extensive engineering knowledge that exists inside the ETAP model. So these dashboards uh, can be uh, configured in an HTML page uh, and display variety of information uh, including uh, monitoring data. Uh, these dashboards can also include uh, comprehensive uh, gauges, bar charts, uh, depends upon uh, the preference uh, of, the, of, of the operator or the manager. We can also include uh, trends, real-time trends from the system uh, sequence of events, uh, various disturbances or alarms that may have occurred in the system can be uh, included in the events along with timestamps. Uh, we can also include the data in a geospatial format. So if the information is uh, for an electrical system that is fairly distributed, we can also provide a geospatial interface and overlay the real-time data and the electrical model uh, on, on a geospatial map. 
But the really cool part about the uh, dashboard is the ability to do simulations straight from uh, a web browser. I can quickly go to my single line diagram in my browser, decide I want to do a what if analysis. In this case, I'm looking at a data center and I'm tripping uh, a PDU uh, in the system. As soon as I uh, trip a device, I can quickly ask the program to uh, run and give me the, the results. And I can understand from uh, a summary what would happen if I was to trip one PDU in the system. What would happen if I trip the main utility feeder uh, in the system? So my under voltages would exist in, in these parts of the system and that would be the actual voltage on my bus, about 442 volts. So I can do all these calculations straight from a web browser without really having the ETAP interface and it makes it a whole lot uh, easier to understand especially for the operator uh, or a manager in the system but if you need the details, you want the depth, you, you like the engineering side, you can obviously go to ETAP and use ETAP real-time, uh, the engineering workstations. So uh, again, I thank you for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, we will be uh, recording this webinar and broadcasting this uh, once again at 9 p.m. Uh, this webinar will also be, be available on our website. Um, that you can uh, watch uh, for those of you who've already registered uh, and you missed something and you want to uh, look at some information again. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, email us at uh, training at etab.com or sales at etab.com or just simply pick up the phone and call us. We would love to hear from you. Phone number is area code 949-462-0100. Thank you very much.